This season, America's best home cooks have already faced the most explosive and ambitious team challenges. Here they come! In MasterChef history. This is almost an impossible mission. You've got 60 guests, the bride and groom, and they're waiting! Tonight, they get a taste of Americana running the kitchen of an all-American diner. We are open for business. It's a classic menu. One club. It's a chaotic kitchen. Two pancakes, you hear me? Got it. With hungry customers. Can I join you for desserts? Absolutely. One team will be sunny side up. Oh, you guys, that amazing. And the other will get fried. Toast is burning. Table two is leaving, leaving in one minute. Yeah. Do not let it make it out here without it being perfect. It all starts right now on The Great American. Master Chef. Our remaining 14 home cooks head into the heart of Culver City in Los Angeles for a team challenge that will test their skills and speed. It is top 14. Now it's really becoming apparent who's the stronger competitors and who's the weaker competitors. Based on actual cooking skills, at the top we have Courtney, Christine, Willie, Jamie. I would put myself in the top, absolutely. I'm going into another team challenge. I don't want to get too excited or too depressed. I don't know what it's going to be, who it's going to be with. Oh, hey, what's up here? What's up, guys? How's everything taste? Uh, delicious. Good morning, guys, coming in. So I'm looking at this diner, and I'm thinking, man, I feel like I'm back in Texas. I really think that's where my heart is, is that kind of atmosphere. Welcome, everyone, to Diner's Family Restaurant, one of the most iconic and busiest all-American diners in Los Angeles. This diner serves over 1,000 delicious plates every single day. And today, you 14 home cooks are going to be the ones making all the food. You 14 home cooks will be split into two teams of seven. Those two teams will be covering the busiest shift of the day. During that shift, each team will be responsible for cooking for one half of the diner. For today's team pick, things are going to be a little different. We will decide on the team captain. We've seen many of you perform as great leaders, but there are some of you that we feel we need to see more of. I haven't shown my best. I haven't won a challenge. And I want to show the judges that I've got what it takes. I had my fingers crossed. Please don't pick me. Please don't pick me. Today's first team captain, captain of the red team, is... Christine. I'm in the investment world. I'm able to hold my own on Wall Street. And this is my time to really impress the judges and let them know that I'm here to work my ass off and to win this competition. The second team captain has a big heart, big flavors, and a big... Willie, you are today's new team captain. I'm, like, super excited. Here's my chance to prove to the judges that I'm not just a person with big flavors and can support a team, but I can actually lead a team to victory. The team pick will be a little different, too, because there won't be a team pick. The two teams will consist of boys yeah. versus yeah. girls. Yeah. 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 Please, form your teams. Oh, yeah. Boys versus girls is like the best idea ever because everybody knows that girls rule and boys rule. Oh yeah, baby. Oh. Kitchen diners, cooking, I think it's more of a guy thing. I don't want to insult anybody, but I just don't see it happening with the girls. Is everybody happy with their teams? Yes, yes sir. sir. Ready to go? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Greg, I I'm not. Boys and girls, for me, it feels a bit old-fashioned. So, each team decide on one member of the opposing team that you want to have. Oh, my God. Start now. 
She's been on the winning team twice. And she, she's going to be able to be good on the, on the, on the flat so top. He's worked in a restaurant like yes. this before. I've heard him say that he's done it before. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Yeah. OK. So, Christine, who are you taking from the blue team? The person I picked is someone that I've seen in action. And when he's motivated, he's a beast in the kitchen. Who's that? Christian. Wow. Wow. Interesting. When my name got called, I was like, I love that. Me? By myself? All oh, women? Who would not love that? <sighs> Big Willie, tell me who you are taking from the red team. This person has proven themselves in group challenges time and time again. I'm choosing Victoria. Well, I know I haven't impressed the judges with anything that I've put on the plate. And it's great that my teammates like me, but, you know, it's the judges I really want to win over in the end. Christine and Willie, because you are the leaders, you will be the ones expediting in the kitchen. You set the bar. When each customer enters the diner, they'll be given a MasterChef dollar. Then, if they like what you serve them, the customers will give your team a tip as they exit the door. If they don't like the dish, or well, they're not happy with the standards, clearly no tip. The team with the fewest tips at the end of the service will face the dreaded pressure test. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes sir. Your prep starts now. Off you go. Good luck. With straightforward American Diner classics on the menu, this challenge will be all about the team's timing, communication, and quality control. I want you to be up there with me. Okay. Okay. I want you on fried chicken. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm good with it. You're going to be on chicken. You're going to be up with me. You're going to help Christian out with the sides, and you're going to be on pancakes and the compote. Let's all right, do let's do this. Tough one. Totally. Putting these contestants in the diner really will show us a lot about their ability because it's a lot of pressure and it's the same things we're looking for. We're looking for flavor, consistency, speed, and technique. I need everybody focused. Do you understand? Yes, yes chef. chef! My big worry is the expedite. Expedite, you've got to drive the team. There's three tickets in the air at any one time. I want to see everything before it goes out. Okay. I don't think they've ever worked on this kind of pressure with that kind of speed. No. Guys, unless you have something to say to me, do not speak. Here we go. We are open for business, guys. Let's go. It's now time for the home cooks to serve the diner's toughest critics, their regular customers. Diners will be seated in either the blue or red section and will decide whether their team's performance is worthy of a tip or not. First ticket, two fried chickens, one pancake, one egg scrambled, one club. First pancake, one egg scrambled coming up. Red team, two fried chicken. Two pancakes, you hear me? Hurt, two pancakes. 90 seconds on chicken. Rapid, let's go. More customers arriving. Next ticket, two fried chicken, two club sandwiches. Got it. Christine is ruling with an iron fist. Courtney, just watch the grease a little bit. Yes, yeah, chef. She's directing the orders. We don't notice how busy it is. We just know what's in front of us and what is at task. Service, please. With Christine's strong leadership, the red team is off to a good start, while on the blue team, Willie is struggling to keep track of multiple orders. I need those two sandwiches. What's the time? Two? I thought you wanted three and then one, and then there's two more coming. He wants one club sandwich, he wants two, he wants four club sandwiches. I've made seven. Press, I need two clubs. Two more clubs? Two more clubs? No, just those two he got. Just oh, those just two those two? He he's only got one. Well, then you're reading out. The orders are not being read out correctly. From the get-go, Willie's overwhelmed by everything. Food is dying in the window, blue team. We're having club sandwiches resting in the window when pancakes haven't been fired or we're waiting on eggs. I mean, everything just starts unraveling. Let's go. I need this table. Come on. Why is table three taking so long? OK, give me those. Give me those. Uh, uh. Today's All-American Diner Challenge is about quality and speed. How long on the fried chicken? Four fried chicken coming up in five minutes. While the red team is working efficiently, Service, please. the blue team is struggling to keep up with their orders. I need... Mean... So, so what? I need... Mean... 
Willie is a team captain. That's great and fantastical and magical. Unicorns riding around him all the time. That's fantastic. But I think he's a little confused. I need one. I've never expedited before. I've never worked in the professional kitchen. I am all over the place. It's going to be like this. So it's like that with a scrambled egg is going to be a ticket. Yes. Then you got two fried chickens with a scrambled egg and a club. OK. It's on me now. We're behind, and it's time for me to step up and get my team back on track. I need six fried chicken, one pancake. Hard chef, 15 seconds on pancakes. OK. Do you have this? You want me to take over for you? I got it. I got it. OK. I got it. OK. Order on table eight. How are we? We're doing great. Nice to see you. How long have we been coming here? Uh, since it's been open. What, since 1959? Yes. Incredible. And how does it compare? Is it up to your standards? Yeah, really good. Can I join you for dessert? Absolutely. I'll be back. <laughs> Hello, ladies. You were eating the dishes of the red team. What'd you think of the eggs? Good egg cook? Good. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. How are we looking on those scrambled eggs, Courtney? 30 seconds. Today's challenge will be decided by tips. A satisfied customer will leave their team a master chef dollar before they leave, while an unhappy customer will head straight for the door. Elizabeth. Why is that hanging in the window? I know. We're What's waiting on waiting? clubs. We're waiting on clubs. Back on the red team, incomplete orders are dying in the window as Elise struggles with the club sandwiches. She's smushing the bread. She's got to stop doing that. Real careful on the bread smooshing. OK. Take a deep breath. Fire it off. Another one. All right, let me let me throw this out. Elise's clubs are not looking good. Listen to me. you got to get the cut better. Yes. Yes, come on. We, can, we can't afford to get the... Christine, that. that's the fifth time. I know. The cut of the toast is wrong. The toast isn't toasted well. It's just looking a little wobbly. And that's not coming out of my kitchen. Elise, we need those sandwiches. Let's go. You're taking too long. OK. Let me tell you something about club sandwiches. Club sandwiches are not easy. Bread, cheese, tomato, turkey, bacon, lettuce, toast with mayo, cheese, ham, bacon, lettuce, another piece of bread. And then everything has to be perfectly layered, or your sandwich is going to fall apart when you try to cut it. Look, no, no, oh, no, 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 look, it's looking worse and worse. Yeah. Aren't we? Elise, I can't serve this. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Do, yes, yes, yes. Well, someone needs to help. Okay. You're, you're, you're blocking the service. Can you just go back and, yes. and help right now? Without a doubt, if we lose this, I'll be blamed for the loss. Uh, red team was struggling uh, big time. Club sandwiches have really backed them up. At least can't even cut the bread properly. Elizabeth jumped from expediting over onto the club sandwich. How's that possible? possible? It's toast and lettuce. Uh, it's one of the most popular orders. It's such a shame because food is in the window and it's dying and they're waiting non-stop on that club sandwich. Come on, guys, on the clubs. I need two clubs. So based on what you've seen, what are you thinking? I think Christine's behind based on the club sandwich. Um, I think Big Willie's got his team and the blue team are literally heading towards victory. Sure. It's halfway through the afternoon rush, and despite the judges' confidence in the blue team, Leslie is cracking under the pressure of the egg station. Leslie, these eggs look different every time I see them. You gotta keep that plating consistent, okay? They're, they're sunny side up, that's the way they make them. My job in this kitchen today is to make sure that quality is consistent. That's not going up, look at this Wait, oil. Left oil, Leslie, left oil. And Leslie is taking it very personal. And that's reflecting in the next 20 plates he puts in the window. Do not let him make it out here without it being perfect. Are you kidding me? I'm busting my ass here. I work in three different areas. I'm working the toast because I need toast on my plate. I need the eggs on the plate. And I got to go into the freaking oven and pull out the bacon and the sauces. They're two burning hot trays. And I got to worry about burning my freaking hands. And he's yelling at me? Leslie, do you need help? What's no, going on? No, I don't need help. I'm good right now. If you stop talking to me, I'll be good. We need to communicate, Leslie. I need those eggs. They're coming, Willie. They're coming. I can't make them cook any faster. I ordered the blue team egg breakfast. Eh, I don't think I'm going to tip. I'm not going to tip the blue team. The eggs were OK. The rest of the food was cold. Leslie. What? Listen to me. After those two, I want you to get on toast. Victoria, can you get on those eggs? I need the change. Got it. Leslie is just turning out so many subpar eggs that Willie fires yeah. Chef, how many eggs do you need? One scrambled, one sunny side up. Her. That's it. Yeah. Let's see how better they can do it than me. Leslie's pace on the egg station has caused orders to back up, and the diners are getting tired of waiting. 
Have you been waiting a long time? You're hungry? I think the blue team's a little backed up. I'm gonna go check on the kitchen and make sure that food's coming, all right? Hang in there. Listen to me. Table two is leaving unless I get the food in one minute, okay? One minute. If we don't get the food out and the table gets up, and you have a table of four, that's four tips that you've lost. I have one minute for those over easy eggs and they're walking. We're working them in the pan right now. We have to push it. A table walking out, that is just unacceptable. Toast is burning. Yeah, what's going on? They're leaving. Guys, table two is walking out. Table one is walking out. Eight boats down the tube because you couldn't get the food out. Willie, table two is gone. And table one is walking out. Eight boats down the tube because you couldn't get the food out. I need an over easy and a sunny side up, Victoria. Forget about it. Take them off the bond. These, these are gone. You don't need these tickets anymore. These are dead. In today's fast-paced diner challenge, customers are voting with their Master Chef dollar, leaving a tip if they are satisfied with their team's performance, and heading straight for the door if they are disappointed. We're still hungry. We had to leave because it was like 45 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing. What do I need on eggs all day? We don't need no eggs right now. They walked out. We lost two tables. But as a leader, I have to keep calm. But I know that if we don't collect those tips, we could be facing the pressure test. Willie, every tip counts. Come on, guys. While the blue team forges ahead, Christine's red team is back in full swing with both Elizabeth and Elise working the club sandwich station. Club in the window. Thank you on that club. Service, please. But just as things are looking up, a red customer flags down Gordon with a serious problem. Damn, it's just there, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm not going to eat it. No, I'm sorry. Christine, raw chicken. Oh, yeah. Christian, no. we just served raw chicken. Christian, it's raw. It's raw. Christian, customers have been coming here for 35 years. Keep your standards up. Yes, yeah, chef. This is not good. If we intend on serving raw chicken, then we might as well just go home and shut it down. Unbelievable. We're all in on our customers. Come on, Dad, push it. We can't afford any more tables to leave. The last tickets are in, and it's all about the tips at this moment. Have you eaten at this diner before? 35 years. Wow. You had the club sandwich? Yes. Is it better than the food that normally is at diners? It's as good. As good. Listen up. I need one more fried chicken, one club. It means everything to me right now to get every single tip into that jar. I work for the Red Team Club sandwich. Do you like the chicken of the red team? I would have liked the skin crunchier. Would you give the red team a tip? I'm, I'm torn because I didn't like the green beans. No more tickets. No more tickets. Good job. Go, oh, you guys. Y'all amazing. Uh, red team, blue team. Yes, chef. Your shift is over. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. OK, Joe, Graham, and myself are going to count up the tips, and we'll see you back in the MasterChef kitchen tomorrow, where the winning team will be safe from elimination. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's go. There was a couple of moments where we, we felt bad. I know, right? We had not a single table walk out. I hope that means something. Yeah, right. Leslie, you're being quiet. I try <laughs> and keep my mouth shut during challenges. <laughs> when will you apply that to the rest of your life? No. Oh. I'm not going to acknowledge you. I'm just, as far as I'm concerned, you don't exist, so I'm going to leave it at that. What do we do if we don't? We're going to be on the balcony looking down, so that's, that's where I feel, you know? I feel proud that I was able to lead these wonderful cooks. But if we do go into a pressure test, I will take responsibility for my team losing.
Walking in the kitchen today, I'm feeling a little shaky. I haven't been in a pressure test at this point, and I definitely don't want to start now. You want to bring on a pressure test? Bring it on. I've already been with, what, through two already? Yesterday, we asked you 14 home cooks to step up and get a taste of what it's like to be in a professional working kitchen. Both teams performed admirably, but unfortunately, one team will be facing the dreaded pressure test. Each team was responsible for one side of the dining room. Each customer at the diner was asked to tip $1 if they were satisfied with the quality of their food and the speed it got to them. We've counted the tips, and it's close. Very, very close. One team made $87 in tips, and the other team made $82. There's a difference of just five tips between teams. That's so close. I could be cooking today, and I have to be ready for that outcome. The team with the most amount of tips was... The team with the most amount of tips was... Red Team. Well done. Congratulations, Christine and the Red Team. Please, head up to the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Blue Team, you guys will be needing these. I think the Blue Team underestimated just how well the girls can do. Take that, Blue Team. That goes out to all the men that don't want to pick a girl on their team. Go! Blue team, you will now face the dreaded pressure test, where at least one of you will be walking out of those doors at the end. Big Willie, as captain, your choice is you can now save three members of your team. Or you can save yourself. But if you do save yourself, Everyone else on your team will have to cook. Ah, uh, chef. Be smart. There is a very serious pressure test coming up. Knowing Willie, he's going to pull, like, a good person card and save three other people. I know it. This is a competition. I would save myself. I'm saving three people, chef. Why? I am a man of integrity. I led the team. It's my fault. I'm willing to take it. Very admirable. Tell me the first name, please, young man. This first person that I'm going to save, had it been for them, we probably would have been down by a landslide. And for that reason, I choose to pick Daniel. Daniel, you've been saved twice now from pressure tests. Yeah. Something we don't know? Um, I don't think yeah. I've hurt anybody or made any enemies. No? And I think that's working for me, <laughs> except for Leslie, who's cackling right here, because he doesn't know how to be a grown-up. Even though he's the oldest man here, he's a child. Otherwise, I think I have the respect of everybody else in this kitchen. OK, head up. Congratulations. You're through to the next round. Well done. Uh, good job. What did Daniel do besides stand up front and do nothing when we needed him in the back? OK, Big Willie, two more saves for you. This person really shined in the kitchen in spite of everything. Scottish Francis. Thank you. Safe. Congratulations. Last choice. This person, I was very happy with their performance, Chef. I am picking Victoria. Wow. Thank you so much. So. Willie, Leslie, Dan, and Cutter. You will all be cooking in tonight's pressure test. One of you four home cooks are about to make their last dish in the MasterChef kitchen. Are you guys ready to find out what you will be cooking in order to survive? Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. Beautiful, moist, delicious. Red velvet cake. A southern classic. Oh, look at it. 
elegant, delicious, beautiful. It's a slice of magic. You've got the cream cheese frosting, contrasting with that wonderful, dense sponge. Each layer perfectly formed, a cake to die for. Mm. We want at least three delectable layers of stunning cake. Now, it's time to head to your stations. On your stations, you'll find everything you need to make your cake. Butter, flour, sugar, eggs, buttermilk, white vinegar, cream cheese, and food coloring. Now, is everybody ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 90 minutes starts now. You know, I'm looking to take on every challenge as a new day in the MasterChef kitchen, and hopefully it comes out well, and I can show the chefs that I really am here to play. I'm not terribly happy about having to cook in a pressure test. I'm not happy about having to do cake, that's for sure. All right, guys, red velvet cake, what's going to be the difficulty in making it in this challenge? The secret behind a great sponge is the density of that batter, how you incorporate that sugar and the eggs. 25 minutes to cook in the oven, so they've got to get that in the oven within the first 30 minutes once that batter's been exactly. made. And the cream cheese icing has to be slightly tangy, right? And make sure that that cream cheese is thick enough to almost act as a glue. Willie somehow moves more slowly, but does everything more quickly than everyone else. I know, I know. I'm always cool and calm in the kitchen. I don't, I don't be running around like the rest of these folks around here. I just do what I got to do. Right, uh, Big Willie, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Chef. Uh, how many times have you made a red velvet cake? Oh, several times. And do you always put pecans in them? I'm going to roast them, and then I'm going to crush them up, and then pat them on the side. And how do you keep your cake moist? It's about not overworking it. So that's why I did mine in a bowl, mm -hmm. because if you're not familiar with a mixer, no. you can possibly overwork it. Good luck. Thank you. Leslie, how do you feel about baking? I'm loving it. There's no pressure here. I'm just, I'm just, this is another walk in the park for me. Shut up and cook. What are you going to do with the pistachios? I don't know. I like dust, you know. Dust. It's just an idea. What happened between you and Daniel now? You know, Daniel's quick to criticize, but he's not quick to help, you know? I put him on my team, and instead of supporting me like I supported him, he puts a knife in my back. And that's fine. I have, I have plenty of knives in my back. Oh, my God, he's an idiot. Oh, it smells good. Well, it smells it like something. <laughs> right, Cutter, talk to me about red velvet cake. Never made one, but I've eaten plenty of them. Frosting, what are you do with the frosting? I'm going to do a cream cheese frosting, maybe some little decorative art on the top. Good luck. Thanks. Damn, wool's bag is so thick. Ah. You should have your cakes in the oven by now. My problem with baking is whatever ratio I think I have in my head, I. I'm very leery about messing with it. What is Dan Wood doing? But at the same time, it has to look the way it's supposed to look. He needs to get that thing in the oven, or Dad. he's going to go home. You can tell how thick it is. No, 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 not yet, not yet. In this pressure test, four home cooks are tasked with creating a gorgeous three-layer red velvet cake. 30 minutes remaining. Those cakes should be out of the oven by now. Part of being in this competition is getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that you may not think you can do. Oh, I smell cake. The cakes just came out of the oven. I miss the layered cake, so it's really important that you trim them, top and bottom. I think that's a big thing, especially for home cooks that they don't know. They pull them out, they start stacking, versus slicing that little top bar yeah. so that it builds like a block. Guys, just over 20 minutes remaining. That is such a lot. Or use your hands. All right, guys, this is Leslie's third pressure test. Every time he bounces back, it's like an old dog that you cannot put down. Willie's got a lot of confidence. Yeah. This is right in his wheelhouse. I'm really worried about both Dan and Cutter. Dan Woos, as you can see the cake already, is starting to look uneven. You start with an even cake, you finish with an even cake. So he is not looking confident. Cake is brown. Cutter in the back is doing different color icings. I'm really surprised that Cutter is taking this much time decorating. Yeah, but is that compensation for the lack of taste? 90 seconds to go. Come on, guys. I'm pretty much screwed here. He's in trouble. Finishing touches, let's go. 
10 seconds to go. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Cakes down. Well done. Well done. Woo! Brilliant. Uh, it's time to taste them and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen tonight. The way my cake is looking right now, I'm happy with it. Everything is leveled right. Like, it just came out of bakery. Big Willie, describe your red velvet cake. You have a classic red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting, dusted with toasted pecans. I mean, visually, it's slightly skewiffed. It slopes down. It's like a lazy lob. Oh. However, I mean, it looks good. Nice, firm texture on the sponge. A layered cake is all about the ratios, right? Yes. And Big Willy. Mm. Gorgeous. Love the colour. Got that nice ruby red. Now for the taste. Goes through beautifully with the fork. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, the actual frosting is delicious. Uh, you've really got the batter. Absolutely perfectly right. Great performance. Thank you. Great job. Thank, Thank you, Chef. It's moist, pretty near perfect. I think more than anything, you've put your heart and soul on the plate. So, delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie, good looking cake. What's the green stuff on top? Pistachio. Just to add a little salt to the sweetness. It's very good. It's moist. I like the addition of the pistachios. I thought I wouldn't. Construction is good, you know? In your mind, are you starting to believe that you could actually win this? If I don't believe, who else will? Certainly not Daniel. Oh, no. None of them up there. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> Why is it that there's such antagonism for you, Leslie? You want to know what? I don't know. What's so funny? I just love how he doesn't even see his own mistakes and why everybody doesn't like him. <laughs> okay. He's a one-trick pony. Okay. I, I have to say, Cutter, I disagree. <laughs> you don't know me. So oh, don't I even know talk. You Get on your horse and ride you. home. That's fine. Hmm. It is a good cake. Thank you. We're not here to moderate or judge wars between contestants. That's not what we do. We taste the food, and they don't decide who the next master chef is. I don't. We do. Bother me. I know that. And that's why I'm here to impress you. I don't care. Wow. That looks nice. Mmm. Frosty delicious. What's in there? A little vanilla, mm -hmm. lots of butter, lots of cream, and a lot of love. I think there's something quite intriguing about the more pressure you're under, the better you become. I'm hoping so. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, there was an overall feeling that you were struggling through that challenge. What happened? I got up to a decent start, made a couple of mistakes, got frazzled, did not level off the cake enough, so it's a little uneven. It's a little hard, too, compared to the other ones. It's a little yeah, tougher to cut through. Yeah, I overcooked it a tad as well. You overcooked it. There you have it. This is a red velvet cake. Yours is like a boiled wool cake. It's got like a woolly texture, not velvety and soft. Yours has a definite homemade texture to it. But, you know, if yours is homemade, his looks like it might be child made. So we still got one more cake to taste. OK, uh, Cutter, describe your cake, please. I made a red velvet cake with equal layers with a good cream cheese frosting. What is that on top? It's the American flag. OK. Whilst I admire how much you love your country, I've never quite seen a flag like that. Yeah, I know. I ran out of time. And the outside of the cake looks like a hairy back. What is that? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> I shouldn't have added it. Do you have a hairy back? Yeah, I do, actually. Is it modelled on the side of that? <laughs> Pretty much. OK, uh... so, uh, the outside looks ridiculous. I'm hoping inside it tastes delicious. Wow. That's a, uh, generous portion of frosting. Holy mackerel. However, I'm all about taste. Moist, delicious, but it is so sweet. I mean, take a little bite and just get a little gist of what I'm saying. It's sticking to the roof of my mouth and on my first mouthful. You've cooked the sponge beautifully. 
However, it's about that ratio, and you've got to get that balance right, Cutter. Damn. So just visually, the frosting looks really heavy. I think it's a good cake, but I don't think it's too sweet. Uh, I have to disagree with Chef Ramsay. I think it actually tastes pretty good to me. I think just everybody has a different palate. But I mean, it's, I think it's one thing if somebody gives you their feedback for you to be humble enough to say. Right, that's why I'm trying to figure out where the balance just, is because just I don't let know. me finish. And you don't want to just sit there and say, I stand by it. It's good. No, 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 then it's I just like, well, why does anyone not, give sorry, you Sorry, that's not what I meant for it to come out like. I just want to understand what is considered too sweet well, compared with. Now you know that this is considered oversweet. You need to show me how to shut the up. I'm not following. What's, what's the discussion here? What don't you agree with? It's not that I don't agree. Okay, let's change that, okay? Let's get that straight. I'm trying to learn here. I taste cream cheese, and that's what I'm trying to understand is what's considered more sweet. Are you the kind of guy who lives in, in, in a delusion? Like, if any time we tell you something, you're going to become so defensive. Look, I'm on the edge of going home. I'll be honest with you, I'm on the edge of going home. Baking sucks for me. I do to get, to get defensive because I do feel like I put my passion and my heart into everything I put in. If you think Gordon's pal is terrible, you're allowed to think that. That's not that. what I said at all. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> Cutter is just sitting there shooting himself in the foot. And why would you mouth off to Joe? And why would, why would you have anything to say other than yes, sir? I think that you have to have respect for us and our opinions of what we tell. I'm trying my damnedest. All I do is get hammered. All you do is interrupt me when I'm talking to you, and you sound ignorant, Cutter. <laughs> Baking sucks for me. All right? Wow. Yeah, I do to get, to get defensive because I do feel like I put my passion and my heart into everything I put in. If you think Gordon's pal is terrible, you're allowed to think that. That's not that. what I said at all. Don't put words in my mouth. Oh, dude. I'm trying my damnedest. All I do is get hammered. All you do is interrupt me when I'm talking to you, and you sound ignorant, Cutter. In your opinion, who should we send home? In my opinion, for what you're looking for in a true master chef, I think you should li send Lizzie home. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all a big circle, Leslie. You laugh, but it's all a big circle. I'm not even talking to you. Are you still here? Willie, Leslie, Dan, Cutter. Uh, unfortunately tonight, at least one of you is leaving this competition. Please excuse us. We need a moment to discuss. Thank you. <laughs> this is great, huh? Oh yeah, I like the pecans. Uh, Leslie's tasted delicious. Yeah, I'd say it was the best. Yeah, I've been doing this a lot longer than you, before you were even born. The amount of icing in the center of cutter is way too sweet. Gotta be able to lead and take criticism, yes. too. Yes, okay. You're doing a terrific job. Dan Woods is way too dry. I got a big, big red cookie. Scandalous. No, it's all right. No. Willie, step forward, please. You didn't have to be down here cooking. But by staying down here, you proved your integrity and your ability. You are safe. Thank you. Please head up to the balcony. Good job. Come on, Big Willie. Yeah, Willie. I'm ecstatic. I came in saying I was a baker, and I've proven myself as a baker. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Amazing. Leslie, your red velvet cake tasted as good, if not better, than Big Willie's. Please join everyone else up on the balcony. You are Thank safe. you, Chef. Dan and Cutter, unfortunately, one of you will be leaving this competition shortly. One of you has a humble approach. One of you has a boisterous, somewhat disrespectful approach. But ultimately, it's about what you put on a plate, how you cook across this pressure test. I am competing directly with Cutter, who honestly doesn't want to respectfully learn and grow as a cook. I should be the one to stay. Yeah, yeah I think so. I, I think my cake technically was done right. It looked a lot better than his. I deserve to stay here, and Dan needs to go home. Dan and Cutter, let's be honest, both cakes had their ups and downs. However, there was one that has the edge the person that will be safe from elimination and not leaving the biggest culinary competition anywhere in the world tonight. Cutter. You are safe. Head up to the balcony. Good an hour. 
Dan Wu wowed us from the beginning. Unfortunately, your cake is so dry, it's actually the texture of a biscuit. I'm sorry. It's time for you to take off your apron and leave MasterChef. Come and say goodbye. Thank you for this uh, Good luck, Dan. opportunity. Thank you. People are going to add great flavors. Don't stop cooking. Absolutely okay. not. Never. Thank you, Dan. Please put your apron on your bench. Thank you. Good night. Being here has been like living in a dream that I didn't even know I had. Dan Wu. Yeah! To have gotten as far as I've gotten is affirmation that I'm as good as I think I am. Wow. That looks beautiful, Dan. Dan Wu. Dan, wow. Great job. Thank you. The sheer joy of learning and experiencing things I never thought I would do, uh, it's been unreal. Next week on MasterChef, a giant mystery box challenge has the home cooks confronting Gordon Ramsay. He's like a samurai. Done. I mean, the guy's a master. And the fight for a place in the top 12. This is amazing. This is one of the best that you've put up. Pushes the home cooks to the limit. What's the matter? I need a medic. Get some water, please. Quick. You OK? Oh. One potato, two potato.